When people find out that you work on cruise ships as a guest presenter, they have a lot of questions. In the last video, I talked a bit about how I got started. In this video, I'm going to share a little bit more about how it works. Curious? Stick around. Welcome to Cybersecurity Uncensored. I'm Logan. Welcome to the channel. We're glad to have you. So I've been in cybersecurity a very long time, but I also work on cruise ships. And that probably strikes a lot of you as a very, very strange thing. In the last video, and I'll put the link in the description for this one, I described how I actually got started in it. It's a very unorthodox approach, but it's worked very well so far. So in this video, let's talk about how the process works. How do I get to pick what cruises I work on? Well, I don't really get a lot of choice. What happens is someone from the cruise company will reach out to me, and this usually happens in one of two ways. Either they send me through an explicit invitation to say, hey, we would like you to work on this particular cruise. Are you available? Or they'll send me a list of available cruises. Now, it's not that I get to pick and choose on that list of available cruises. What it is, is they're trying to figure out which ones I'm actually available for. So I'll go through the list of available cruises. I'll pick the ones that I can probably work on. And then they'll let me know which, if any, of those I've gotten selected for. So this usually kind of relies more on the fact that I've actually already done some cruising to begin with. So it's the same process for your very first cruise. They make an offer, you accept it. And if you're any good, they will have you back. Now, I'll talk a bit more about the actual presentations and kind of the ebb and flow of it in another video. But once I've got that offer through, I'll respond and say, yes, I can work on this particular cruise. Or I'll respond to the list to say, these are the cruises, dates, times that I'm available to work on. I usually try to make sure that they don't conflict with any other obligations. So, for example, I want to make sure that they don't conflict with, say, end of financial year obligations. And I do try to pick them around times where normally I'd take some time off anyway. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But I do get a few cruises every year that I'm able to work on. So once I've sent through kind of the response, I usually hear back from the cruise company to say, well, that's great, we'll just lock you in. Uh, and then a few months later, they'll usually send stuff through, usually within about two to three months before the actual cruise date. So it's all kind of set up and ready to go. Now, I've been in contact with both the Carnival head office here in Sydney and as well as the Carnival office over in Florida, mainly because Carnival Corporation owns p and Cruises Australia, Carnival Australia, and quite a few other brands. I've been mostly with p and Cruises Australia. So as we get closer to the date, usually they'll send through a formal invitation letter. And that includes a bunch of information, such as a presenter's handbook and a lot of other details about you know, what it is that you need to do. They ask for some basic information, like a bit of a bio about the presenter, and they also ask for some session outlines. So what I've been doing is I've been sending through the session outlines in Microsoft Word format, because whenever they do the daily newsletter or the daily schedule that's printed out and left in everyone's rooms or made available around the ship, I recognize they're probably going to cut and paste content straight into it. So if I can give it to them in Microsoft Word, it just makes their life a little bit easier. It usually includes session outline, so a bit of a synopsis, the title of the session. Uh, what I'll generally do is I'll send through a lot more than what the form will put together, and I'll say, just pick and choose whichever ones. Now, on more recent cruises, I've kind of set the flow because what I've done is I've done you know, a beginning lecture, and then I've done another lecture that kind of builds on it. But I've also been recording them and sharing them on YouTube, as you can see on my channel, just so if someone happens to miss a session, they're able to come and see it. So getting back to kind of the flow of getting set up, once I've submitted the paperwork, it contains all the details about what's expected of me, what I can and can't do. A lot of people tend to ask me, you know, do you get paid? You know, what's kind of the compensation like? Now that's very, very strict and confidential information that we're not allowed to share. It's different person by person, cruise line by cruise line, but I can't really share too much about it. Know that it, it works out in everyone's favor. They get something, I get something that all works out fantastically. So once you've completed all the paperwork, then it's just like booking any other type of cruise. They basically look after all the setup, um, the, the booking and that sort of detail, and they'll send them through to you. And you can go online, like through your, your user portal, like the P&O Cruise Control, and you can select, you know, the room type. Do you want twin beds? Do you want a queen bed? 
You can select your boarding time, just like any other booking and stuff like that. It is beneficial as a presenter that you get to use the VIP boarding, which does cut down on a bit of the wait time, which is pretty cool because you know what, when you're going on a cruise, you want to get on the ship, you want to start to get unpacked, start to unwind and just start to kind of get into the whole cruise groove thing. So really from that point forward, it's no different than any other cruise. So on embarkation day, basically you show up. Now the trick here is that it depends on the cruise lines, whether or not they look after your travel. Some do, some don't. Uh, in my particular case, I look after my own travel accommodations uh, because I'm based in Brisbane and we have a major ship uh, port here. It's pretty easy for me to just get down to the port of Brisbane to get on a cruise ship. But there's been other occasions where I've worked on cruises out of Melbourne, out of Fremantle, out of Singapore. And then what I've done is I've gone usually a couple of days before. And it's like anything else. You never want to travel on the day of the cruise because, well, anybody that's flown knows how things can go sideways. So I generally intend to go a few days before the cruise actually leaves, you know, spend a bit of time looking around the cities, wherever I happen to be. And then come cruise day, it's pretty easy cab ride or an Uber ride down to the terminal and get on the ship. So once I get on the ship, it's like any other boarding process. You go through security, you go through customs and immigration, you get on the ship, you find your cabin, you go through muster check and all the other sort of things that go along with cruise. So I'll, I'll detail of this at a bit more in another cruise session. But at some point during that first day, I have to meet with the entertainment director. So what I'll do is I'll go down to their office uh, or they'll meet me somewhere, like at a bar somewhere around the ship, and we'll sit down and we'll go through some of the details about the presentations, you know, times, dates, flow, any other questions I might have, and uh, make sure that you have all your kind of equipment set up. I'll share a few more details on what kind of the setup is for presenting once I kind of get to that point. So then... It just kind of goes through the flow. And when you're on the ship, you know, you're basically a guest, but you're also kind of crew. So you really have to be very mindful of your conduct. You know, you don't want to be going out and uh, being uh, an idiot. You don't want to be drinking too, too much. You don't want to be carrying on like a pork chop because you are representing the company's brand. Uh, and it's, it's definitely an honor and a privilege to do that sort of thing. So I'm very, very cautious when I go on. I mean, I enjoy myself. I have my drinks. I play games and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm very, very mindful that I'm representative of the brand. So while I'm technically crew, I can't really go into the crew areas themselves. Uh, I just stay amongst all the guests in the guest accommodation. So for all intents and purposes, I'm mainly a guest. And on the days that I'm presenting, which usually tend to be C days, I make sure that I'm set up, ready to go on time. Uh, I interact with the guests a fair bit. And then this goes on for the duration of the cruise. Now, Presenting on cruises usually tends to be on longer cruises. You don't get them on the short, you know, two, three, four, five, seven night cruises. You tend to get them on the longer ones. Most of the cruises I've worked on tend to be 12 days or longer. I've done a couple of 12s, 15, 17, and so on. So at the end of the cruise, generally um, there's some feedback that will come back to you, or sometimes I'll talk to the entertainment director and the cruise director throughout the cruise, and they'll give you some feedback. Uh, but other than that, you hope that you've done a very good job. Uh, the nice thing is that the guests are very, very responsive and give you feedback right away, which is always very, very helpful. And if you're any good at it, well, they'll come back to you in the next few weeks, months, maybe even next year, and ask you to work on a future cruise. So while I don't really get to kind of pick which cruises I work on, there's a bit of flexibility around it. I really think it's enjoyable. So if you want to know more, stick around. I'll do some more videos about the actual presentations, some of the topics I cover, interacting with the guests, interacting with the crew. I'll try to cover a whole bunch of this type of stuff. But if you've got any questions, just send them through to me. Uh, leave a comment down below. Anywhere that there's kind of some helpful links on any stuff that I cover, I will actually put some links below. Uh, if you've got any questions on particular things about cruising, uh, if you're new to cruising or if you're a cruising veteran, you might have some questions about how it is that uh, uh, it's like for kind of a presenter slash entertainer on the ship, send them through. Uh, but looking forward to seeing you guys hanging around and uh, stay safe out there. We'll catch you on the next one.